This video is sponsored by Skillshare. It has brought to my attention that many YouTubers and photographers have been comparing this brand new 20mm f1.4 Pro to Sony's new 40mm f2.5. So exactly what's going on? It's Jimmy here and welcome back to my channel. You've seen the video title and I want to talk about this today. And I hope that this video will be educational and useful for those who are keen to find out more about why you can't compare Sony's 40mm 2.5 to this, the MG Core 20mm f1.4 Pro. Remember, I'm not here to say which one is better or worse. I only based on specifications and you can draw your own conclusions on whether what I said means anything to your photography. First, I often find many confused with the word equivalence. APS-C and Michael Four Thirds are considered as cropped from the 135 or full frame format. Equivalence only refers to the focal length and the approximate effective depth of field and not the aperture size. In other words, if I use a 35mm full frame lens to take a picture, then crop the center 50% of the frame, I will get a 35mm Michael Four Thirds image. And let's have a look at this picture taken with my full frame Zeiss 35mm 1.4 set at 2.8. Then compared to my Olympus 12 to 40 2.8 Pro set to 35mm and set to 2.8, they are basically the same. And look at the setting also, very similar because the aperture doesn't change and it lets the same amount of light into the sensor. So for those people who keep saying that Michael Forza's 1.4 aperture is not 1.4 but 2.8 in full frame, is totally wrong. And I hope this video clears people's minds. Second, apples and oranges. Well, we are looking at two totally different formats here. And there's no way why many YouTubers mislead their viewers and often comparing them together. If one is to review a lens, review it as a lens on its own and don't compare it to another format. The funny thing is, they often compare full frame lenses to APS-C and Micro Four Thirds, but not to medium format or larger. It's almost like a larger student bullying a smaller size classmate, only to make them look better and stronger than others. Micro Four Thirds is a format, and all its lenses are designed to work with Micro Four Thirds cameras and systems. Photographer can use it or other APS-C or full frame to produce stunning pictures, regardless of format. And how one adapts to one format is what he or she prefers for his or her own circumstances and needs. And that's it. Each format has its own merits and also drawbacks. If you say full frame is perfect, well, I would believe you, but only to your own terms and not others. And I would always support and congratulate a photographer who find his or her perfect system. While we're talking about the understanding of photography format, I would like to talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform where you can find tons of high quality materials so you can learn new skills or further your existing knowledge. Even as a professional myself, I need to keep up with the latest trends and upgrade my skills for tomorrow's projects. I recently got a few new inspirations for my good friend, Dan Rubin's travel photography class. It's fun, relaxed, and well presented. And this is the same across all classes inside Skillshare. So if you want to learn something in photography or even for your well-being, there's always a class in Skillshare. Because I'm so good, Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 subscribers a one month free trial instead of the normal seven days by clicking the link in my video description. So you can start exploring this huge library to your heart's content and boost your creative juice and all at the comfort of your sofa, bed, maybe even toilet if you wish. <laughs> but anyway, let's go back and continue our discussion today. Right, I've already mentioned it in my previous video that you can never compare products from different grades. OM Systems new 21.4 Pro is a pro grade lens while Sony's 2.5 isn't. They may cost about the same, but they don't build or design the same way. Well, first one is 1.4 aperture and the other one is 2.5. And OM has 11 elements in 10 group, comprises of one Super ED, three ED, two Super HR, and two spherical elements. And Sony employs a much cheaper design with nine elements in nine group and only two spherical elements. But critically, Despite Sony's claims of its weatherproofness, 
even Sony themselves has a very small, like very tiny print saying that it is not 100%. OM, on the other hand, has a proper and professional tested rating of IPX1. And like I said in my previous video, I will pay to get a pro-grade equipment for my work, as I prioritize reliability and performance over anything else. And in this case, I wouldn't hesitate to take the new 20mm to work, while I wouldn't with Sony. Fourth and final point, Sony's new 40mm 2.5 will affect the camera's AF performance, especially in low light. Well, if you don't believe me, take a look at any, and I mean any camera specification, you will see AF sensitivity ratings. And most pro bodies claim to be able to see and focus in minus three to minus six EV. While this sounds pretty cool, if you look at this small prints again, it usually says that the optimal AF sensitivity rating is optimized for a very specific aperture size. Like Sony's A7R4, the Minus 3 EV AF performance is based on a lens with a f2 aperture. So if you use this 42.5, you simply won't get the minus 3 EV low light AF speed or accuracy. On the other hand, Olympus EM1 Mark III has a minus 6 EV sensitivity and optimized for the 1.2 lenses. So you can do the math and work out which one can focus better in lower light situations. So, while no doubt that both lenses can produce great images, there is absolutely no comparison between the two different lenses from different formats. And like I said, I don't look at the price tag, but instead see what the lens has to offer in terms of performance and reliability. Moreover, Sony's 2.5 lenses are entry-level consumer lenses, and OM's 1.2 and 1.4 primes are pro-level lenses for demanding photographers. And each has its own market, and you, and only you, as a photographer can determine which group you belong. And that's it folks, let me know what you think about what I just said and I welcome your thoughts on this topic. And you know what to do now, give me a thumb if you find this video interesting and click the sub button if you want to stay in touch with all things photography, filmmaking and of course, OM system. Peace! I will always support and congratulate a photographer who finds his <coughs> Oh man, this is bad <laughs> oh. I'll be back Oh gosh